Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So you guys saw a video I did maybe a month or two ago about fixing a snowmobile. The one I was fixing up was just an older, like a trail sled, but it gave me the itch to get back into mountain riding and I found a really good deal on a mountain sled. This thing is sweet. It's a 2019 Arctic Cat Mountain Cat 800. It's got a turbo on it. It's got a bunch of aftermarket parts on it but it's not running like it should. This thing is running super rich down low, like before boost ever kicks in, it won't idle, it just loads up. First things first, we're gonna check the reeds. I'm hoping that's the issue. If it is, we should be able to find some. These are aftermarket reeds, but I guess these turbos like to eat reeds up. So that's, that's the hope anyway. I'm hoping these reeds are gone and we can just replace that. That's gonna be cheap. It's gonna be fast and easy. We don't have to spend a bunch of money to get this thing running right. But other than that, when this thing builds boost, it is freaking insane. It is quick. It's on like eight pounds right now. So there she is. It's all blacked out. It's got a, a gray hood, but here's the turbo setup on it. It's a little rusty. Must have had it sitting outside for a little bit, but it's got low miles. It's got, like I said, the turbo. It's got a bunch of goodies, uh, aftermarket control arm, or A arms here, uh, a seat, running boards. It's got aftermarket um, uh, rails back here. It's got the three inch track. This thing's sweet. I'm excited. Very, very excited. So what we got to do to get these reeds out is pull the pipe, pull the ECU. There's a, there's the uh, intake boot that runs from here all the way up to the uh, throttle bodies and the, the right down in there you can see where the reeds are right there. So we got to basically strip all this out of here. Not shouldn't go that bad really these things are pretty easy to work on but we should just, i gotta get those reeds out check them out i'm hoping they're all chipped up and we can just replace those Well guys, I think we got lucky. We found the problem. Look at these reeds. These are a two-stage reed. There's supposed to be another set underneath that. And you can see they are literally completely gone. And I mean, you shouldn't be able to see air through there. You can see there's a huge gap on that one. This one is about the same really, maybe even worse. Now you can see there's nothing left. There should be, like I said, there should be two layers of reeds. This top one is all cracked out. The bottom one is completely gone. Safe to say, I think that's our issue. I'm gonna go, I don't wanna wait a week because we're supposed to be getting snow and I wanna go ride this thing. I'm gonna call around, see if I can find some stock ones. Well guys, I ended up finding some stock reeds, which actually, according to my research, everybody says, these things actually last a lot longer than the boysens I had in there with the turbo. I guess the turbos just love to eat those boysens. So let's throw these reeds in there and see how it does. That's right where it should be. Well, this thing is definitely running a lot better. I thought we were off to the races. Well, 
Turns out my secondary clutch has got some pretty nice wobble to it. Something is going on, either the clutch, something in the clutch is messed up, or that whole jack shaft is bent. So we're gonna tear this thing down, we're gonna figure out what's going on, cause I am not gonna ride it like that. Well I did some messing around and I think the main problem was somehow the outer sheave was on crooked. These three shims that go in between the two sheaves, they were, they're just completely mangled. They're all mushroomed out. So I think somehow that thing just wasn't square. So I, I don't think those are factory shims. They seem way too soft. These are factory Articat shims. I'm gonna put these shims in, get that bolted in, get this clutch lined, and I think we should be good. I don't think anything's really bent or messed up. I'm loading up now. We got the sled in the trailer. It is uh, obviously the night before. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna get out. I'll see you guys on the mountain. Well, I'm not too happy about it either. I decided to stay home today from riding because the avalanche danger right now, where we're usually riding the last like two days, there's been like four or five avalanches reported. There's been a few people that have actually died in them. So I decided I'm staying home today and we're gonna get a little bit more work on the sled done. So when you look at this thing, it's got aftermarket stuff everywhere. It's got aftermarket A-arms, spindles, bumpers. I mean, everything is aftermarket except the rear bumper and the main reason although i don't like the, i don't mind the look of it the main reason i want to build a rear bumper is because this this tunnel section in the back of these sleds really isn't very strong the main problem i see is where it ties into the main frame these are two separate pieces here and you can actually you can wiggle the this rear section of the tunnel and these rivets are just they just loosen up over time so what i'm going to do instead of buying a $400 bumper, I got a plasma table, I'm gonna make one. So we're gonna come all the way up here, we're gonna brace this entire section, and we're gonna tie the bumper into this main frame plate right here. We gotta kinda of work around my oven and around my press brake, just because I am gonna do some bending in it. My press brake is like 20 something inches, so we're gonna have to do probably two separate pieces and then tie them together with another piece. I know it's not ideal, but I wanna be able to powder coat it and I wanna be able to bend it. So I'm thinking we come from here up to about here and then we'll do this back section. And then, like I said, we'll have to just tie it in with another piece, maybe an overlay on the inside, on the outside. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I think we can make it strong. I think we can make it look really good and it's gonna strengthen up this entire rear end. So let's get to work with the cardboard and see what we can figure out for a bumper.
Tell me what you like. Let's get this hood up. Anything? Yeah. What are you fing doing in here? What? Fing weld this bitch. You need to do a bunch of fing tags. I was gonna pull it off a fing little bit. Why? Easier? Dude. God, you're fucking ridiculous. I mean, I guess I could weld it on here. Fing it. Should just snap. Spang! Well guys, I decided I wanna spice things up a little bit. Instead of just coating this stuff all black, I decided I want to kind of match the gray that's on the hood and the windshield with a couple things on this. So I want to do the spindles in the gray. I'm gonna coat the upper A-arms black and then the rear bumper is gonna be black, but the whole brace basically running from the back up to that front section is gonna be gray. So it's gonna really set things off. I think it'll look really good having a little bit of accent color, not just making this thing all blacked out since it already does have the gray hood. I'm gonna go with the gray, so that's what we're doing. If you guys are looking for a hookup on powder, look no further than Prismatic Powders. This is where I get all my powder coating stuff from. This color specifically is called Crest Gray. It's kind of a Nardo Gray match. That's at least what they said. It's the closest match to Nardo Gray, which I figure looking at this hood, it looks really close to like a primer gray, Nardo Gray. So that is what we're doing. Crest Gray and some stone black on the upper arms, and like I said the rear bumper that is a stone black that's more of a matte black i don't really want it super shiny so that's what we're doing like i said if you guys are looking for any powder coat head over to prismatic powders
fire going? <laughs> get unstuck first oh, no. I thought I was good but she went buried her If you can't tell, I don't know how to ride. day the sled did really good this thing is an absolute freaking beast at first it was making like nine pounds of boost ended up screwing around with the vacuum lines and whatnot got it down to like four where i feel comfortable with it anyway now the sled does need a little bit of tinkering here and there but all in all sled done really good didn't really have any issues with it well anyways guys i'm gonna go get to bed hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm gonna wrap this one up here why don't you go smash that thumbs up button comment subscribe we'll catch you in the next one